When people ask me the question around why do you get so taken up with the whole topic of digital watches, I think it's quite interesting. And for me, there's two main sources of gravity that go into this. One is almost this value of history, which is a combination of an interest in electronics, but also a nostalgic element to do with uh, digital watches more generally, but also an interest in design or just the aesthetics or the retro look of these watches. And I think this creates some natural categories. So for those that are, have a big historical bent, as well as a real interest in design or pop culture, I think this is kind of a, a group of folks that fit in here. And I've kind of labeled it as design or pop culture geek, which I think is a real cluster of collectors. The second group I see are very much driven by the history, but not necessarily quite so much by some of those aesthetic elements. Of course, it's all a blend. These are the folks who really look at the module numbers, are interested in technological advancements, and it's all around the historical relevance of the particular reference. And then, of course, we've got the group of collectors or enthusiasts that are very much driven only by the aesthetics uh, and the kind of historical or nostalgic element is of less relevance and these are the people who chase the limited editions they all just want the the latest cool retro aesthetic looking watch the final group are more utility driven or economically driven and that's just people who want a watch that does the job they don't like analog watches for whatever reason because of legibility or immediate access to the time or that they need a very functional watch for a professional capacity or a particular use like gardening, sport, exercise, whatever it might be. So I've, I've kind of categorized this as the utilitarian group. I thought it might be nice to double click into these clusters because for those who are outside looking into the hobby, it can give you a hook for why people get uh, sucked into collecting watches from that angle. But for those inside, it's useful to kind of position yourself. So for the design or pop culture geek, a couple of different clusters in here are those that just like these very eccentric references from a design perspective. The other kind of main uh, pole on this continuum is those that are very much driven by childhood or pop culture nostalgia. So for example, Seiko have got this example from their design museum. This is an instance of the latest iteration of kinetic watches that won some awards uh, in this field. Braun really bring their own aesthetic to the digital watch uh, kind of historical lineup and adding new things into this element with Ale and the El Capitan model, nobly modeled here by Russell from Mad Watch. These folks are interested in these kind of design elements of the FS10 with its slim design, but even more throwaway things like this Casio model that's focused on fight punch magnitude and this Thermoscan module that looks at surface temperature. This is my own one one thousandth of the second chronograph that has both design but also complication elements and also like the retro gaming style thing with these funny old gaming watches which have a lot of nostalgia for people as well as links into film and promotional and novelty watches especially for me my timex iron man both the historical version and the new version bring lots of joy for me as well as iconic film references such as this seiko uh, from James Bond, as well as the more recent uh, look-alike uh, from Metal Gear Solid done through Seiko Wired. If we look at a few clusters of people that sit more within that driven by aesthetic group, uh, we've got those that are really chasing after limited editions, you know, especially within the G-Shock brigade, those that just want to own lots of different varieties for fashion purposes, those that kind of are more on the retro fashion group so this is less people that have grown up with these sorts of watches but just enjoy the retro fashion uh, as well as obviously the smart watch domain which had to fit somewhere so for example the nasa uh, g-shock models are very much like hotcakes that people want to get their hands on the collaborations with artists such, such as the king nerd g-shock that was very popular uh, last year timex are very good at doing these collaborations with the Japanese store beams. So these are were very much featured on Hype Beast and uh, are very sought after. And of course, there's kind of the vintage fashion that uh, is very popular now. So Casio have got a range in this area, as well as clothing lines. So Lacoste have got some quite cool looking uh, digital watches in general. The kind of geek or nerd aesthetic as, the, as well there with the original calculator watches for the new age, 
as well as new iterations of, of smartwatches with the forthcoming GBD 200 series. As for those that are primarily history driven, I think there's a few little groups in there. One is the super nerd, which is just kind of the module collector or completionist. They just kind of want to own every reference. Uh, one that's probably closer to my heart is the technological first. So that's those that attach themselves to little pieces of history in terms of advancement of technology. And the final one is, is, is related to that, but it's those that are almost collecting different types of complication uh, that exists within the digital watch realm. So for example, this Sakura model, very obscure, that has a kinetic uh, element to it. Uh, Sakura with one of the early solar quartz models is something that these folks would collect. Seiko with the first multifunction watch. Uh, this very obscure individual reference for Casio Cognate Schema is something that these collectors go wild for. This missing link uh, for G-Shock that was between the conventional Casio and G-Shock models with the snorkeler random orient models that disappeared in the 70s obscure calculator watches such as the ones that citizen put out like the one on screen outdated uh, technologies like twincept that disappeared from the map like casio um, and this blood pressure model which is an interesting complication and this crazy complication which is able to pick up your mobile phone signal all the way from the late 90s this is the stuff that this group go mad for as for the last category, so those aren't, who aren't really driven by history or the design per se, but it's more to do with utility and economics. So some double clicks I've got here is those making a political statement like, I don't have my fancy mechanical watch, I'm fine with my digital watch. Those that need it for their profession, so out of professional necessity. Those that just want a cheap and cheerful watch and those that are averse to analog. So for example, Bill Clinton made a big statement with his use of Timex rather than one of the Rolexes of the presidents, uh, the presidential Rolexes, Bill Gates over the years with his various smartwatches and the like. This is an example from G-Central showing the, the favor of G-Shocks within the military. And also you've got these kind of cheap and cheerful models like the this Kamei series, which are pretty much knockoffs of G-Shock squares, but appeal to this particular segment. So that's how I look at this thing. So hopefully for those of you who are outside of the digital watch enthusiast uh, hobby, hopefully it gives you a flavor of some of the things that drive people who are interested in this area. It's not just one thing, it's kind of this weird blend of many things. For those of you inside, maybe it makes you rethink how you're approaching a digital watch collection. And I hope uh, it's a nice, fun and interesting way to start breaking up some of these very cool watches that we love and enjoy. And that's all for today's video. I hope it gave you a, a little way of thinking about this hobby. Uh, if you've got a different way of looking at it, please leave some comments down below. If, if you want to follow me for more of this content, you can subscribe here or follow me over on Instagram at Watch Reactions. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.